What's happening troops, welcome back to another video here on the Sharp Dev YouTube channel. If you are new around here, please consider subscribing. Now when you look at that title, you would think that I'd be happy. In fact, see to be quite honest, I was really, really happy until George Edmondson's eye socket decided to half Tavernier's points in Fantasy League. I'm already struggling as it is on that app, never mind. Big Georgie boy having to get involved. I think me and Georgie will need to have words like, like me and Alan did actually at the weekend there. Right big man, I'm thinking that today is going to be 3-1. I do think they're going to score. Free <laughs> yourself man! What? They've got a tremendous strike force. Are you serious? Seriously? Come on! Hey, I'm sorry, 3 now. Jesus. All joking aside troops, I'm buzzing with that result. It's Rangers 5. Motherwell won. Let's firstly just run through the team lineups for both teams. For Motherwell, they had Carson, Gallagher, Mugabe, Lamy, O'Donnell Campbell, O'Hara, Polesworth, Grimshaw, Watt, and Lang. And they set up in a 3 5 2 formation. Rangers stuck to their traditional 4 3 3, and there was a couple of changes within that. We had McGregor, Tav, Goldson, Halanda, Calvin Bassey, Davis, Kamara, Arfield, Kent, Morelos, and Jordan. Jones. So the first game that Jordan Jones has played in a long, long time, and also Calvin Bassey making his debut at Fur Park, not an easy place to go. I was actually listening to another show, and ex-Rangers player Mr Ray said that he thinks that it will be a massive impact on the game, the fact that Motherwell were playing European football, because the old firm teams, they do it every single year, Motherwell don't, and there was other people on the show disputing him. And I think what we've seen, judging by the way the first 30 odd minutes went, it was a big, big factor. No taking away anything from Rangers because they were just absolutely emphatic on the day. They first get the penalty and it's that man, Tav, steps up, takes it, cool as you like. Adding to his goal tally this year, which is just ridiculous. Then the second goal that Rangers score, some beautiful play from Scott Arfield, who kind of went a wee bit unnoticed in this game, but he popped up in massive moments and had a great game. But because there was other guys that also had a great game, I don't think that much people are talking about him. But he was just absolutely brilliant. That's a Scotty Arfield that we love to see. He put a beautiful pass through to Jordan Jones. And the manager said in the post-match interview, this is the Jordan Jones that I want. I'll take nothing less. With his pace, he gets in. Left foot finish off the post and into the back of the net. It really was a great run, great move and great finish. Finish? Jesus Christ. He's no finish. He's only 28. From that man, Jordan Jones, and the celebration to match. Pretty much saying, trips. I'm still here, I'm still fighting for this Rangers jersey, let's go. A lot of people have said Rangers have been good, but they've not been clinical enough in this game. The exact opposite, Rangers clinical, and that's what you like to see. Another delivery from James Tavernier into the box, and it's a handball from Liam Grimshaw. For me, both penalties have been disputed, but the hand is in an unnatural position, it's out with the natural silhouette of the body on the first and the second penalty, and it's definitely a penalty every day of the week. Tav goes the opposite side, gets his cell his second goal of the game. And from here, that's the game. Game set and match, Rangers three points, up the road, shower shit in bed. In the second half, probably took the foot off the gas a little bit, there wasn't as much midfield runs, but then again, it was still a solid performance considering we just came back from Holland during the week. We went there, we were brilliant from start to finish. We just needed that wee substitute. On comes Big Eaton, proving everybody wrong. What a finish, by the way, for his first goal. And in the second goal, that's what you want to see. I want to see more of that from him, just instinctive. That's what you want from a good striker. He makes it 5-0. And you're thinking to yourself, we can get a clean sheet here. And it wasn't to be. It was actually a good ball in. I think it was Seedorf. Fires it in and it just does hit Big Georgie Boy right in the eye socket. And goes right into the back of the net. And that was a wee bit of a kick in the teeth for the back line. And the goalkeeper, who were immense, start to finish. From a Motherwell point of view, that's still only two wins so far this season. So they will be looking to start picking up those wins again. Yes, going into that game they had four wins and six. But only two of them coming in the league. So they'll be wanting to kick on now, start getting some results and start climbing up that table. From a Rangers point of view, exactly what you want. 
You've now got one game left, and then you're going to international break. And I believe that could be Rangers' best start to a season for years. Absolutely years. If we go in undefeated into the setting the international break, that'll be tremendous. Taking one game at a time, building towards that old firm game where it all comes to play. That game is going to be massive because Celtic are winning and they aren't getting beat. Rangers are winning and they aren't getting beat. So that game is going to be fireworks. I just wish fans could get in. Come on, Nicky. Let's go through the starting 11 and give them a rating out of 10. Starting off with Alan McGregor. I'm going to give him a 7. Never had much to do, but when he was called upon, he made the difference. For goalies, it's hard to get him higher than that when, let's be honest, Mullerwell hardly done anything at all. I think they handled the ball more than Alan McGregor in this game. If it was a clean sheet, maybe would have gave him an 8. Probably deserved a clean sheet though, but yeah, can't really see above a 7 when he's not had much to do. Calvin Bassett made his debut in the league versus Motherwell. Very tough place to go. Probably didn't have the same impact as a Barisic in terms of going forward, but defensively he was solid and he's only going to get better. He was still good going forward, don't get me wrong, but then again didn't get his assists or whatever and didn't have a lot to do in the the, uh, the defence as well, so I'll just give him a 7 as well. 7's a good mark by the way. Moving on to the two centre-backs, Goldson and Hollander. Didn't do anything wrong. Didn't have much to do. It's a seven from me again. Right across the board. Until we get to this last man. Tavernier. It's got to be a 9.5. Tens are mental, aren't they? Tens are just a bit mental. So I'm giving him a 9.5 in this game. He got two goals. He was involved in other goals. He was, he was brilliant in the game. And for me, warrants a 9.5. Bloody winter time coming or something. Let's get this ISO up. Moving on to the midfield, a guy who's had a lot of criticism is Glenn Kamara. I'm giving him a 7. Solid in the match again. Never had much to do. Showed a wee bit more going forward. And yeah, just didn't make a lot of mistakes. So for me, it's a 7. Steve Davis, the same. Solid in the match. Picking up from his performance from last week. And that's what you want from a player of Steve Davis' ability. You're not going to get below a 7 from him most weeks. And when you do, you're just scratching your head like, how did that happen? And the sun's back out. Scotty Arfield went under the radar in this match. I thought he was brilliant. Some of the passes were exceptional. He gives you that midfield run that not a lot of our midfielders do. And I'm giving him a 9 for this game. I think Tavernier's just outshone him a wee bit. But Scott Arfield was brilliant. The manager will love to see that. Gives him a headache in games because Scott Arfield hasn't been a starter. He's probably wormed his way in now with injuries. Moving up to the top three, I'm giving Ryan Kent a seven in this match. It wasn't one of his blistering games that he's had previously. It wasn't one of the absolute standout players in the match. Um, but he was still solid, still done a job. I think as a winger, sometimes it can either be down your side or down the other side. And in this game, it was more down the Jones side. Kent though, solid, no complaints whatsoever, but it's a 7 from me. Gonna give Alfredo Morelos the same score here, a 7. Um, he was good in the game, didn't get a lot of chances. Again, a lot of the chances fall into the other players, but solid. And now it seems to be that he is a starter. I don't think it was in any doubt really when he got his sell back up to, to match sharpness and match fitness that he would be the starting striker. It's good to see him back in amongst it and hopefully Rangers can keep a hold of him. Jordan Jones, another one of the standout performers and given great praise from the manager after the game. And a wee bit of incentive, a wee bit of motivation now to kick on. You've had your chance and you've took it. Not a lot of players do that. And he has took it. He's had to be patient. But when he's came in yesterday, he was top notch. I'm giving him an 8 in this game as well. Probably fell out of it a wee bit in the second half. But that goal, that run was brilliant. I want to see more of that from Jordan Jones. And I think we will see more of that from Jordan Jones when he gets his opportunity. That right wing position is up. It's, it's there for the taking for him. If he can just keep putting in performances like that, then I don't see why he couldn't make that spot his own. Let's do the substitutes now. George Edmondson, got to give him a five. Like, he didn't do much wrong, but he did score an OG. Sorry, big man. Yanis Hadji, give him a six. Came on late in the game, got an assist, was involved in the game. That's what you want from players coming off the bench. Jermaine Defoe and Balogun, give him a five as well. Came on, done well, didn't do anything mad like the next man, Cedric Eaton, that I'm giving a 9 to. I mean, you come off the bench, you score two goals, against the odds, the first goal, wow, unbelievable. The first touch, up, bang, 
unreal. And that's why I'm giving him a 9. I'm swaying towards Tav for that man of the match though. But I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below. But that has been this episode of Thursday. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new as we climb towards 14,000 subscribers. Slowly but surely. Then the next will be 20,000. I've been Sharp Div, you've been yourself and I'm out. All my weakness keep on